to um, start the Tobago Festivals and Culture webinar, where you're going to learn about all of the things on offer on the beautiful sunny island of Tobago. Stephen, over to you. Thank you very much, Sarah. And I will double that welcome. Thank you guys very much for attending and signing up and joining us today live. And for all of you guys who are watching this on, on Catch Up, as we call it in the UK, um, yes, I hope you enjoy and learn a lot from this presentation. So I'm going to start sharing my screen and I would like to then introduce my fabulous guests. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce Kay Trotman. Um, Kay is from Tobago's unique Bed and Breakfast and Self Catering Association. And Kay will introduce you all, give you a little bit of a taster of uh, the vibe of local culture, um, particularly around some of the small properties in Tobago. Um, you will also be um, have a little presentation from Phil Williams from TTT Excursions, and he'll give you a little bit of a grounded, um, personalised experience with some of the some of the some of the little festivals and cultures and cultural experiences that you can have. And finally, um, you've probably already seen Marsha and some of my previous presentations. Um, Marsha is my main squeeze colleague in Tobago and she helps me out with absolutely everything to do with Tobago and so and Marsha is going to talk to you specifically about a lot of the festivals um some of the wonderful festivals we have throughout the year in Tobago um so that's that's the little guess obviously myself you, you guys should know me by now I'm Stephen um, I'm actually not in Tobago I'm actually based in London and I'm the sales and marketing manager for the beautiful island which i call paradise now we've got we've got a little treat for you um if for those who've seen some of our presentations in the past you know that we always introduce um, the these these webinars um with our um gorgeous sumptuous video um, we also have today a world exclusive for you we actually have a new video um, but just to get you into the vibe and get you into the feel of what Tobago is all about, we always like to get you, you know, guys feeling in a, like a proper Tobagonian. Here's the first video for you. It's only when I go abroad and I see what is out there and I come back and I measure against what is here, there is no comparison to beauty. Some writings of our history, it is said that Christopher Columbus called it Bella Fauna, meaning beautifully formed. Natural, beautiful, peaceful. <laughs> yes. I get emotional. That's why I'm here. <laughs> One of the fascinating things about nature, there is always something new. And especially in the tropics where there's such wide diversity, persons can experience and have the awe associated with some of the beaches we have, aquatic life we have, some of the fascinating birds we have within a day, within a short period of time. You have the Caribbean Sea on one side, you have the Atlantic Ocean on the other side. On our doorstep, a fringe reef that wraps around the entire area. You have this huge amount of biodiversity and uh, you know liveliness of the entire water that surrounds the island. We also do bioluminescent nighttime tours, which are like uh, an escape into the deep, dark secrets of this you know, glowing phenomenon. It's like this almost cosmic effect. It's just something to be seen. I know everybody in the village. <laughs> and everybody know me. That is the nice thing about here. Tobago is used to the extended family. There was always a grandmother, aunt, or uncle. There was always love. We eat and we drink, we laugh, and everything together.
to me, go in one word to me, beautiful. Beautiful place to live. It gives me great pleasure to be in Tobago and do what I do. The sunsets here are hardly bar none, some of the nicest I've seen. I would describe Tobago as one of the clean, serene, and the best place that anyone could come. Be easy, be happy, and have a good time. There is nothing to compare to. This little dot called Tobago exists and come visit. I'm always anticipating that uh, there should be some a round of applause at that time, but I can't hear you. I'm, I hope you all enjoy. I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, every time I see it, it uh, makes me feel like I really, really, really want to be there. My guests, I'm happy to say, are all there, and everything you've seen on that video, they can all go and enjoy today, tomorrow. This recipe, I'm very jealous now. I'm starting to get myself jealous. But anyway, let's move on. Let us move on. And um, before you hear from my fantastic guests. Um, I just want to remind um, the guys who are based in the UK, um, please, please bear with us. We're just dotting the I's and crossing the T's for our brand new online training program. And for those guys who are international, actually internationally uh, based, um, we are looking at um, hopefully by first quarter of next year, maybe before the summer of next year, extending this brand new online training program to um, to encompass um, um, other regions as well. So look out for the emails, stay in contact with us um, and with your, your local um, representative. And um, hopefully very soon, um, we will have this online training program up and running. Um, we also, um, as a reminder, we also have a rewards program. You guys have all signed up through MBR, so you all should be Tobago Awards registered anyway. Um, but again, this is just a little little reminder of the online of our sort of rewards program. So um, I'm gonna, just going to have a. I've got about two or three slides just to kind of introduce the destination. I always like to just remind people of where we are, key selling points. So we are right at the very bottom of the crest of the Caribbean islands, as you can see down here in the bottom right hand corner. Um, we're very close to South America, in fact, much closer to South America than most of the other Caribbean islands. And um, our location is very much influenced by our location. Uh, sorry, um, uh, very elements, certain elements around Tobago are very much influenced by our location, such as we actually sit outside the hurricane belt. So we don't get troubled by them. I'm touching wood now, making sure I don't put the kibosh on our destination. Um, they generally come in a little bit further north and trouble um, some other of the islands. So, I mean, 1963 was the last time we actually um, was 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 uh, directly hit by a hurricane. So that kind of goes to show we're literally outside the hurricane there. And of course, South America, bird life, plant life really has affected our island it, for the positive. Um, so. You know, that's uh, that's our location. We are approximately, what, 25 miles away from Trinidad, um, which is um, appro approximately seven miles as its closest point to Venezuela. So very much uh, sort of really at the southern tip of the Caribbean islands. We are the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, just for anyone who hasn't seen the presentation before. We are one country, but our focus, all of us, all of these, uh, 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 us on this presentation, we all work and uh, represent the beautiful little paradise that is Tobago. Now, getting there from the UK, British Airways fly twice a week, um, direct. Um, the st service stops in St. Lucia, but passengers do not disembark. They stay on the aircraft. So it is still classed as a direct service um, from London Gatwick to Tobago. The alternative, British Airways also fly three times a week to Port of Spain. Now, um, connecting on with, with Port of Spain, Caribbean Airlines have up to 12 rotations per day for a 20-minute hop down from Port of Spain to Tobago. So again, you can use that service on British Airways. And there are other elements, other options as well for those guys based on the continent. Um, there's Condor direct services from Frankfurt twice a week throughout the year. There's KLM services from Amsterdam, um, flying via Barbados to Port of Spain, again, connecting onwards with the, uh, or providing connections, onwards connections with their Caribbean airline ser service. And for those guys who, um, have passengers who insist on flying with Virgin. Um, there are interline connections via JFK, believe it or not, fantastic two-center option, and uh, with Barbados as well. Very, very different sort of destination. 
and but a good again another two center option now I, I, there is there are a couple of services down from the states as well um, um so there are connections down from i believe houston and from jfk um so for our, our american friends there are options again to go via port of spain to tobago um again there so lots of different ways to get there easily accessible um one of the questions always asked regardless of what i do be a consumer or a trade event is What's the best time to travel to Tobago? Now, all of the guys here will, re will reconfirm and reiterate the fact that Tobago is a year-round destination. We only have two seasons. From December through to about May, June is classed as a dry season. And then for the rest of the, the year, from sort of July through to about November, is classed as wet season. So any of you guys who've been to the Caribbean, have sold the Caribbean, they'll, you will know that wet season doesn't mean monsoon, doesn't mean uh, five six weeks of constant constant rain it's short heavy showers at the worst you'll probably get a, you know at the worst it might be a week a week of rain but you know i've been to the caribbean most of my trips have been over that period and it's very rarely happens that i have a complete washout for a week um, uh, so you can literally go year round to average temperatures of approximately 30 degrees year round so the difference would be in the dry season it'll be dry <laughs> dry heat and then um, um, for the summer into the autumn months, um, it would be a lot more humid. Um, as I said before, outside of the hurricane belt, so we don't have to worry about that. And as you will learn from this presentation from my guests, um, we have loads of different activities. We're not focusing on the sports um, ones this year um, or the nature of that sort of thing. We're more focused on the festivals and, and, and the culture. Um, so you'll find there's lots of different things throughout the whole year where your guests or you as a visitor can enjoy. Um, the island itself, oops, nope, sorry. The island itself, we're only 25 miles by about seven at its widest point. It takes about an hour and a half from the airport down in the southern western tip all the way up to um, Speyside, which is up in this area here um, on a good day. So it, it really doesn't take a long time to get from one part of the island to the other. Now, the main area for um, loads of restaurants and bars and nightlife would be down in this Crown Point area. We've got loads of hotels and, a, and some fantastic fine dining all along this stretch here. And, and one little thing I want to point out about this stretch here, this is a fantastic area if you have any guests who really want to um, experience the, the, the giant leatherback turtles coming into nest. So between March and September, if you have, if you have guests staying along this strip here, um, they, they will the chances of them encountering those leatherback turtles coming up to nest is is fantastic. Um, then when you move around the rest of this island, this northern coast here, you come to gorgeous, beautiful, pristine, unspoilt villages like Castaro, Palo Tuvier, and just as pristine, unspoilt, Robinson Crusoe type beaches such as Englishman's Bay and Bloody Bay, where you can you could practically be there alone. Absolutely gorgeous. And then we come around to this area here and we have Charlotteville and then around to this side where I already, already mentioned Speyside and around this whole crest here, you have, I, I would say some of the best diving in the Caribbean um, all around this particular area. Now, don't get me wrong, we have great dive sites all around here for those who love their diving, but I think the best is up here. And, and you, you, you know, it, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous, incredible clarity of water, really great coral systems. Um, and then when we come around here, um, you've got, well, actually around here, you've got Little Tobago, so fantastic for bird watchers. But another fantastic area for bird watchers is the spine, the Emerald Spine of Tobago, the Main Ridge Forest Reserve, oldest protected rainforest in the Western Hemisphere. Fantastic for people who want to go trekking or trailing and, of course, enjoy bird watching. But people who want some sort of adventure, there's also mountain biking around the peripheries, around the rainforest as well. So absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous a part of the island. Now, one little thing I will point out before I finish the little journey, this is my look, the only thing I'm going to point out is the UNESCO Man and Biosphere designation. Now, this whole area that you see in that circle is a UNESCO, is the UNESCO Men and Bears Fire designated area. And what that incorporates are three elements. I've already mentioned a few of the villages, Castara, Palatuvier, uh, Charlotteville, Spaceside, Roxborough. Sustainability, sustainability efforts within those villages. Particularly with Charlotteville, we have ERIC, which is a, re a coral research uh, facility where they do replantation and obviously research, research marine life around the whole of Tobago and the Main Ridge Forest Reserve, being the oldest protected rainforest, no encroachment into that rainforest, no deforestation at all since 1776. 
So those three elements, the sustainability elements from the villages, the coral preservation and the preservation of the coral systems, protection, sorry, of the coral systems around Tobago and the protection of our forest all come together to make the man and biosphere designated, designated area. So that, that's, a, that's a fantastic thing that Tobago has um, and something that, you know, we like to, to share that we are looking after our environment and looking after our island. Um, and that's it for my little journey around Tobago. We end up finishing back down at Crown Point around here. So yeah, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a taster. Um, hopefully some of you guys have been and seen some of the other presentations that we've done throughout the year. Um, one to do with romance, one to do with adventure and, and waterfalls. And we did one earlier, which was all about the new things to do and see in Tobago. And next year we will have another series of um, fantastic um, presentations for you and try and theme them differently. Before I move on and introduce um, uh, Marsha, who's going to take you to some of our fantastic festivals. I said at the very beginning, we have a world premiere for you. Um, very recently, you just, you, you've seen our um, Nat Geo video, um, which we had produced a, a couple of years ago, um, which was our nice, it's just a lovely, fantastic introduction to the island. We actually commissioned them to do another video with a focus on what you're going to see today, which is our culture and our festivals. It's, it's been shown once to a consumer group that we had, a, an event we had just um, after World Travel Market a few weeks ago, and it hasn't been shown anywhere else. You guys are the first trade people to actually see this video. So without further ado, that's my presentation bit done. I'm, you're going to hear my name because everyone, all these guys are going to be saying, Stephen, next slide, every, every few seconds. But I just want you guys to just sit back, relax for about two to two and a half minutes and enjoy this video. The Tobago Heritage Festival is us as a people reenacting with our old traditions, full of dance, music, drums. It is the spirit of Tobago. This is an island of celebration. From the Black Rock Festival to the Harvest Festival and everything in between. In one specific village, we celebrate this harvest and you don't even have to know the people. You just come in and we welcome you. Then you enjoy the festivity. You could go from house to house. The impact of our music or drumming or singing or dance is its ability to bring people together. But it's also that idea of heritage that we connect to all the time. Anytime I hear the music or hear the drumming, it raises something in you. If you don't come to our island and do a bit of revelry, you are missing out. Music is the pulse of our people. It's the way we express ourselves. Can bring originate in this community. We love that music. Once we hear it, we had a go. The feeling we see them, we had a give up, we had a dance. The Tobagonian dances, we have a number of influences, a lot of the footwork, a lot of the groundedness, which is representative of our African tradition. Most thing we're famous for is the brush back. One, two, three. One, two, three. When you move, you feel. When you move, you engage. And when you move, you inspire. Tobagonians love to dance. Even our birds love to dance. Wake up, people, wake up. But amidst all this sound of different things and different cultural activities, what I really enjoy is a peacefulness that comes through all of it. We are a beautiful people, the people of Tobago. We show love and respect to strangers and hope that they will enjoy the island whenever they visit. Tobago is love. Tobago is unity. Tobago is a rhythm. Tobago is community. Tobago is family. Tobago is tranquility. Tobago is paradise. 
Wonderful, 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 wonderful. I hope you all enjoyed that. That uh, was the world the world premiere. <laughs> I'd like to keep calling it the world premiere of our of our cultural uh, festival and cultural uh, video. Um, so yes, any comments on that? Any questions? Any queries? Please just put that down in the uh, in the chat, as Sarah said. So now, without further ado, you've had enough of me. Uh, but one key thing I will say now: your next three presenters, your next three talkers. One of them will um, will have to come up with a question um, for you. So listen carefully, take any notes you want from these three presentations, because um, the question, your bonus quiz question, will come from these guys. So, Marsha, are you with us? Ready. Excellent. Thank you very much. Over to you, Marsha. Good morning once again, and welcome to the Tobago webinar focused on culture and culture. Well, if the tranquil waters and the warmth and beauty of Tobago is not enough to draw you in. Wait until you meet our hospitable, loving, and embracing people. Tobago is a destination bursting with food and culture and so many experiences. It is difficult not to find yourself immersed in everything that we have here. And Tobagonians are very proud people and we're always willing and happy to share a piece of our paradise with you. This morning, I will just go through briefly some of our festivals just to give you a little uh, taste of what we have to offer, right? We have festivals that will run throughout the year. Some of them are occasional once a year, but you can always find something to do in Tobago because we are big limers here. All right, Sunday school, which happens every Sunday, and by no means is, yes, it's the best, <laughs> by no means is a religious activity. This is where locals and visitors alike come together, and we just chill and wind down from the week, enjoy still fan music, whatever street food is available on the night, and we're just chilling and you know, having that nice vibe, setting ourselves right for the work week on Monday. Right, it happens every Sunday, um, right throughout the year. Um, if Sunday school falls on a Christmas, I think that is the only day that we may not have Sunday school. All right, but other than that, you can guarantee to have a nice little lime and a chill vibe on Sunday school every evening from approximately nine o'clock until. All right. Our goat and crab race is a highlight of the destination. This race is more than 100 years old, and it takes place every Easter Tuesday at the Boko Racing Facility. We raise our crab and goat with pride. <laughs> Long ago, um, our locals could not afford to, to um, enjoy the sport of horse racing. So they were innovative and came up with their goats and crab races, which has become one of our calendar novelty events. It also um, takes place during the Heritage Festival. There's, it's featured there as well. And also on Easter Sunday, you can also get a grip of the action at the Bonacourt Sporting Ground. I'm sorry, the Mount Pleasant Sporting Grounds, where they have their Easter celebrations in that village and community. We do not mount the goats. There's a jockey that needs to keep up with his with his train and and we treat our goats very well. Our goats get regular sea baths and massages. They're put on, on special diets. They're groomed, and they literally become part of the families that own them. These goats sell them go um, to market for meat because they become so loved and so much integrated to the family that most of them are left to go into old age retirement and they're still taken care of. All right. So that's a taste of our goats and crab racing, which you can enjoy here as well. And no, there's not a system for betting. <laughs> Right, our Tobago Jazz Experience. Tobago shows you its heart through our festivals. And the Jazz Experience is one of these festivals where you will see not only our local acts, but our international features as well. Some of the persons that have performed at the Tobago Jazz Festival 
Gladys Knight, Diana Ross, Grace Jones, and Elton John. We even had John Legend a few years ago, right? The events for the Jazz Festival takes place island-wide. You can go to the community of Speyside and have a wonderful festival there where most of the artists at that show are Caribbean-based, but still, nonetheless, a smashing evening. Wonderful evening where you can enjoy not only the food, the music, the people, the, the seaside, take a walk to the seaside and come back to the festival. It's a lovely community to be in to celebrate the Jazz Festival. Apart from that, there are a lot of other events, small events that will take place in some communities. There's also the gospel aspect of the festival that is held at a beautiful Shoba cultural complex where persons come and enjoy not only the soca versions of the gospel, but we also have international acts that will come and grace the stage as well. And the Grande show is usually on the final day of jazz where we have most of our international acts being featured. Sure to whet your appetite for the greater things in Tobago with that festival. And the Pride of Tobago, our heritage festival. This festival not only helps us to preserve and pass on our traditions, but it's also an immersive experience that visitors can take part in to really understand Tobago, its culture, its people, and really get themselves entwined and feel like true Tobagonian. The Tobago Heritage Festival is held every year from mid-July to the 1st of August. The festival really asks just about everything up about traditional life, from weddings, the way we used to keep wakes, you know, christening, different festivals, celebrating our harvest, how we used to um, dance or cocoa, while processing it, of course, you know, and all these things are featured in the Heritage Festival. This is a not to miss festival if you really into culture and want to immerse yourself in a destination. The Heritage Festival from mid-July to the 1st of August is a great opportunity for that. This is where you will see the heart of Tobago and our way of life. Next. All right. <laughs> All right. Tobago Carnival. This was our second year for um, Tobago Carnival 2023. Tobago Carnival is, what should I say? It's not your usual carnival. It's something that is very immersive, but you can also have the entire family participating. It's easy. It's enjoyable. You can choose your activities and the place that you want to go at, right? To, just like most carnivals, we do have a mask band where persons who choose can go into full costume, mask and masquerade through the streets, you know, and really have an immersive experience. For those who are not so fast paced and want an easy going experience where you can probably take along the kids and the entire family can probably participate and enjoy the music and the mask, you can do that and you know, move along with the bands and, you know, still have your own jump along the way. Our traditional characters, as you can see in some of the photos there, we have our damn law and our minstrel portrait there as well. And, of course, we cannot leave out our sailor mask. All right? Carnival is very big in Trinidad and Tobago. We have our national carnival we held in February, which is separate from our Tobago carnival. Tobago carnival infuses a lot more um culture and more experiences that will also not make it about the carnival to say, but also about you enjoying the island, the people, the food and everything that goes with it. A lot of people will come to the island and they may not masquerade, but they will enjoy the other activities like all inclusive fets, you know, the theme fets where you can put on certain theme clothing and go and have a wonderful time. There are parties during the day for those who like to stay out late, and there are parties during the night until the following morning. So you can we have your pick 
just about anything, how you want to go, depend on who you're here with. If you're here with the girls or it's on a guy's trip, you know, you can go hard, go and really hit those fests, get on the street for juvie, have yourself in a mud mask band, really get things going. If you're coming with the family, you can choose more modest events, you know, and be on the spectator line, but still enjoy the beautiful Tobago Carnival that parades along the Scarborough coast. It is epic. Not to be missed. Our dates for the carnival 2024, as you can see, are out there. See the one that the slide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's probably the 25th and the 27th of October. So you have a lot of time to go. And that's it. Marsha, that was Thank fantastic. Thank you very much. Hopefully, you all took notes there very carefully because Marsha is now thinking of just in case she's chosen what question she's going to give. Um, so, yes, that was fantastic. Thank you very much, Marsha. Um, Kay, I'd like to, to ask Kay now to turn on her mic and come to the front. I am here. Are you, you are here. Fantastic. Wonderful. So, without further ado, um, over to you, Kay. Have one now. Thank you very much. Now, following on from Marsha's explanation of the various festivals and a little bit of our culture that we have to offer, I want to say to you that the best way to experience Destination Tobago is to live Tobago so that you can love Tobago. What does that mean? Next slide, please. It means that our visitors must come to the island with the mindset of becoming one of us, a Tobagonian so that they can get that real experience of what Tobago is. It means, and I'm going to stay here a little while on this slide, it means that our visitors must come to the island with the understanding and the mindset that they are coming to live with us. They're coming to stay in one of our unique small properties, whether it's a villa, a bed and breakfast, you know, self-catering apartments or guest houses, they are coming to stay in those atmosphere that are spread across the island of Tobago. They are coming to live like us. So they're coming to find themselves in tightly knitted village community where you see the friendliness and the openness of the Tobago people. They're coming to eat like us. So they're coming to get their taste but treated to that Tobago sweet hand cooking that we find in our cuisine whether it's our crab and dumpling that we are famous for, whether it's on the various coconut stews that we have that we cook our fishes and meats with, or whether it's to enjoy our traditional Sunday lunches and our Creole breakfast. And they're also coming to work like us. And when I say work, in this case on a vacation, it is to experience those work activities that were part of the traditional life of our ancestors. So it's about experiencing dancing the cocoa. It's also about experiencing pulling sail on the beach with our fishermen. And like Marsha said, we can party. So they are coming with the mindset to lime like us, to be able to appreciate those unique sights and attractions that we have. They are coming to enjoy that island vibes and the pulse of our Sunday school. They are coming to be enwrapped, completely enwrapped in Tobago and to become, at the end of all of this experience, to become one of us. Next slide, please. So with this kind of immersive interaction with Destination Tobago, our visitors will be able to see the sights, hear the songs, and observe the nuances of what we call village or community life. Next, please. The end result for our visitors is that they would have a greater awareness and appreciation of the customs and traditions of Destination Tobago. They'll also have a better understanding of the history behind our culture. And at the end of it, a vacation for them in this truly immersive experience will be both an educational experience, but it would also be a fun-filled, memorable vacation. Next, please. How can we plan our live Tobago, love Tobago, authentic vacation experience? 
I would say we have at least two options. We give our visitors the opportunity to create their own experience where they get to choose which one of the small property accommodations they would want to stay in during their vacation period. And at the same time, they also get to choose what kind of authentic experience they would want to immerse themselves in. Next slide. The other option would be to engage in a pre-packaged vacation, which can be offered either a one-week package or a two-week package where the entire itinerary would be planned by one of the island's destination management companies. So we do have that sort of collaboration where the accommodation and the destination management com company can pull together a package that is pre-planned for our visitors. Next slide. Thank you. To have a better appreciation of the small properties that are sprinkled across Destination Tobago, I will invite you to visit our tobago.com where you'll get greater details. Next slide. It means when you visit, you would land on this landing page and you can navigate yourself through the site from there. Next slide. So our call to our visitors from the small property accommodation sector is to come live with us. Come live like us. Also come eat like us, work like us, lime like us. So I'm inviting you to invite all your visitors, potential visitors and clients to be able to come and be one of us so that they can truly enjoy that immersive culture of Tobago. Thank you very much. Okay, that was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> that was brilliant. Thank you very, very much. I, 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 Welcome. I'm sold. I'm sure um, you want to come to Tobago. Yes, Island. yes, yes. I'm sold. Um, I want to see some hearts there. How many of you guys want to come to Tobago now? Come on, show me the hearts. Show, yes, yeah. Show the love. Show the love. Yes. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I am loving the love. Thank you. <laughs> that's absolutely fantastic. Um, yes. Well. Um, now we have we've, we've been moving quite swiftly. We, we you know we're conscious of the time. I'm the only one who rambles. So without further ado, now I'd like to bring uh, my old friend Phil. Oh, the love is all still coming. Thank you, guys. It's brilliant. Thank you, Phil. Come to the front. Unmute yourself. Come to the front. Say hi. Say hello. Make sure that you're up and running. Good day, everyone. And Phil, I am brilliant. Phil Stephen with a mentioned and i am from ttt excursions it's, and it's a pleasure to have you guys here with us today as we continue with the experiences that are offered in tobago so i will share with you five experiences or cultural events that are offered on the beautiful island of tobago which i'm sure at the end of the presentation you are going to send your clients and you too are going to come and join us to experience the beautiful things that we offer here on the beautiful line out of Tobago. So the first uh, slide, Stephen. So we have the tambourine band. And you are probably wondering, what is this all about? If you look in the image below, you will notice some men sitting there with some instruments. So these men constitute what I call uh, the Tobago Orchestra, which we colloquially call the Tambrin Band. So the Tambrin Band is made up of the fiddle, which is uh, colloquially known um, for the violin. We have the triangle and we have the tambourine, which is something like the tambourine. And this tambourine is an instrument, it's a hand drum that was developed right here on the beautiful island of Tobago. And it is made of something called wild cassava that is bent and goat skin is also added. Now, if you look in the video on the right side, you would notice some guys uh, around a fire area and they are very close. And this is part of the process in preparing it to be played because as you heat it, the tone changes and it gives it a really nice tone. So the, 
the, we have three different types of tambourine. We have the roller, the cutter, and the bass, and they, they tune it uh, to give the song that they want to get. And it is extremely interesting to see these guys play the old instrument that was developed during the days of slavery. Now, mind you, these guys playing here are reenacting what would have existed many of many years ago during the slavery period. And I'm referring to the periods of the 1700s and the 1800s. Now, it is important to note that African tradition back in the days of old was considered barbaric and considered evil. And so those people that lived on the estates would have had to find interesting ways of playing and maintaining the culture. So what they would do, they would have the song uh, that reminds the masters that they are playing their music, but the chants, the rhythms, and the dances were all of African uh, origin. And so the tambourine band would accompany uh, the dancers as they would perform to the reel and jig. Uh, we have the brush back dance, which Marsha would have touched in her presentation earlier. And uh, the video that follows, Stephen, shows you You can talk. So this is the performance of the reel and jig. And uh, in the days of old, this dance was done at the blessing of a new boat or even uh, the pre-marriage ceremony of the, the couple at the bride's home or the bride-to-be home and also at the blessing of a new net that was used for fishing. So when we see this dance, it brings just, uh, just this nice feel. And uh, when you send your guests here, we can actually teach them and they can participate in actually dancing the reel and jig and the other forms of dances that we have on the island. Next slide, Stephen. So seine fishing or the pulling of the seine. Many decades ago, this art of fishing was developed and it is still currently practiced on the island. As you probably already know, Tobago is one of the islands that I tell you is very steep in tradition and history. And so this method as old as it is, if you journey to Tobago tomorrow, most likely you would have the opportunity of seeing the guys participate in this ancient method of fishing called sand fishing. So if I should share with you or explain a bit about sand fishing, um, it's a very long net, as you can see with flotation devices uh, right around to the entire, uh, for the entire uh, length of the net. And you have fishermen and guests and whoever choose to be a part of the process, pulling on either side of the net. As you see, it's in a half circle and they would pull until it comes onto the land, um, engulfing all the fishes. And um, all those persons who participate in the same fishing, they are entitled to some of the fish. In some cases, there are people who come to pull same and when they get their catch of fish, they take it home and they do this every day. So you see, sometimes you don't always have to have money to, to eat. And this is one of the, the, the pride and joys that we have here in Tobago. In addition to that, sometimes when they are finished uh, pulling in the scene, they would have a, a bowl uh, for each person as they make the fish tea or fish broth as uh, we call it here locally. Next slide, Stephen. So before you is what we refer to as the dirt oven. 
before the stove was introduced or the regular conventional ovens that we have today were used, this is the ancient oven that was used in Tobago. And pretty much almost every single home had a dirt oven back in the days of old. So you can see this lady here putting in putting in uh, her, her goods. And this oven is made of mud and grass to hold it together. They would oftentimes, it has two doors, by the way, one to the back and one to the front. They would heat it with uh, bamboo and wood and coconut shells and they would bring it to a particular temperature. And when it's heated to that temperature, then they would take all the debris out through the back door, seal the back door, and then they would put their goods into bake. My friends, if I tell you that this bread would have you licking your hands, I am not kidding you. It is extremely delicious. And I know that everybody, all the hosts on this chat could attest to that fact, including Stephen who can't get enough when he's here on the island. <laughs> Stephen, next slide. So here is a photo of some of the produced bread from the dirt oven. Very tasty, as I would have mentioned. And so this is what it looks like. And when you go to the communities that currently offer the dirt oven experience, um, there are people who place their orders for this bread, because if you don't place your order in advance, chances are you're not going to get it because it's so delicious that everybody wants to get their weekly supply of dirt oven goods. Next slide, Stephen. So this brings us to my last element of uh, Tobago's uh, festivals, and I'm referring to here as the blue food. And the blue food interestingly gets, interestingly gets its name from the taro plant or the taro root. I'm not sure if you know what that is. We locally call it dashin, but it's called blue food because when it's boiled, and I'm referring to the comb, when the comb of the plant is boiled, it has a blue appearance. And that is what this festival is named after the Blue Food Festival. So this festival was established in 1997 by the Division of uh, Tourism. And it has blossomed into something that I probably think we did not anticipate it would reach. It is such a huge event today. You have so many vendors providing blue food dishes at this festival. And uh, when you go there, you find everything taro. And by that, I mean taro milk drink, taro or blue food ice cream. You have quiche, you have dashin, banana bread, everything dashin or blue food you can find at this festival. And in addition to that, you don't just only come here to eat from uh, the various vendors. There are local soca artists. And by soca, soca is our local music here that we use and we dance to almost every day of the year. And it is especially uh, played during the carnival season, as Marsha would have mentioned before. So you have a variety of, of, of artists uh, singing their calypso and soca tunes, and you have the opportunity of eating the delicious dishes created by our vendors at this festival. So this is our invitation for you to send your clients to Tobago. And of course, we want to see you here on the beautiful island of Tobago one day. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. No, it doesn't. Oh, one more. We, we have one more. And one that's more. The Festival. How could I have forgotten this one? Could you forget? Harvest Festival is one of my favorite festivals on the island. And the reason is, I simply love to eat. And I'm sure many of you here <laughs> love to eat, including Stephen and Marsha, <laughs> and even Kay. So Harvest is something that is sort of unique to Tobago. And by unique, I mean it has blossomed into what we call something very unique. So it is a celebration it is a Thanksgiving uh, where you traditionally would bring your first fruit, 
giving thanks to the creator for allowing you to be able to farm and to receive your produce. So it was initially orchestrated and crafted by the church organization. And by that, I mean the Methodist, the Anglican, and the Catholic churches that existed on the island at the time. Yeah. And when they bring their first produce, oftentimes the produce was initially sold and the funds would go to maintain the church compound and also build uh, new churches. Today, it has blossomed into something that is totally different. So you have villages throughout the island participating one Sunday in every month. In some cases, you have this harvest festival twice per month, different villages. And what it is really, it's an all-you-can-eat experience. All you can eat. Just imagine that. All you can eat at no cost to you. How does that sound? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? So you go to the village that has the harvest festival and you pretty much go to anybody's house, including if that friend, that person is not your friend. If it's an enemy, you can just go into that person's <laughs> house and ask for a plate of food. And you have to make sure and budget your tummy because it's food galore. So much food that you have to be careful because my friend Stephen, I almost had to take him out in a, a wheelchair, right? He had too much food. And so this is just an event that blows the mind of everybody because it's, it's pretty much unique to the people of Tobago. It comes out of a heart of gratitude. And we give, we give knowing that we will receive more in the future. So thank you very much for listening to my short presentation. If I can, I just add, I just want to add sure. one, one little thing about the images that you guys are watching, are looking at now. Um, this, this was um, a harvest festival that Phil and Marsha took me and my last, this, these girls on the left arm and on the right actually are, are for my last fam trip, which happened, was it May this year? And this is actually us enjoying a harvest festival in two different, two different houses. And as Phil has explained, you, you, <laughs> we don't know these people, but they open their houses to you. And they give you food and you can see the girls there have drinks in their hand and you know you just talk to them and you interact with their family and i yes i do have a picture i've got lots of pictures of me with the, with the little baby from the house <laughs> which i practically adopted because he just was propped on my on my lap and he was with me for the whole for the whole of the time we were there what was his name marcia i forgot his name mateus and mateus yes, all the persons in this photo <laughs> were very hesitant to even enter the house. They were like, can we go in? Can we sit? And within 15 minutes, everybody yeah. was laughing, drinking, holding baby, and you know, <laughs> just like if they're in a family, their family's house. So yeah. this, this, I think, is one of our most immersive and beautiful festivals. This and unique. Really show, it really shows... The heart of Tobagonian hospitality, love, and everything. You can't get deeper than this. Yeah, I I I, I second that absolutely. Uh, of all the trick things I've done on the on my trips to Tobago, uh, yeah, this was one of the most special. Really, well, probably because I did have my adopted baby, but uh, yeah, this it was a really special experience. So yes, wonderful. So please, please sell, sell, sell these wonderful. Thank you, thank you to Marsha, thank you to Kay. Thank you to Phil. Um, this presentation, uh, this presentation, I think, has been absolutely fantastic. Um, I've I loved every second of it. All three of my guests have been amazing. Um, so now, um, Sarah, would you could you could you come back in and and do your thing? Um, I believe I need to um, get one of my guests to 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 do a question. I'm not going to do a question on yeah, which right. airline what airline to fly or whatever what i was speaking about it's about these guys and the, the fantastic amazing things they were talking about on this presentation so i think i'm going to ask marcia because she was she was up front and she's had the longest time to think about a question so <laughs> am, I, am i sarah is that correct so i just asked ask marcia for a question yep. yeah. right? in a moment in a moment you go oh, too in fast. a moment i'm going too fast sorry sorry sarah sorry sorry <laughs> Over to you, sir. You take over. Come on. Good. We've we've got a couple of questions. Um. So, oh, questions. Um, yeah. Yeah. Latisha's asked, is it possible to go back to the DMC slide, please? The DMC slide. Which was that? Yeah. Um, I don't think, 
oh, okay, we, we can't see, we can always forward our, our presentation. presentation. All the DMCs yes. available, represented yeah. in an email. Yeah. yeah. That would probably be better. On my follow-up email, I will, I will send yes. a link to all the DMCs on mm -hmm. Ireland. Um, so that, that will probably be easier and be probably best. Yes. Super. Um, do you have any jazz or arts festivals? Farin has asked this question. Do we have any jazz or art festivals? Or specifically or art festivals. Well, we've got the jazz experience, which Marsha yeah. mentioned, um, because there is jazz, there are jazz artists involved in in the jazz experience, of course. It's not just R&B, soul, soul, yeah. that sort of thing. With regards the to jazz, art, guys? Yeah, the jazz festival does have a element of art, but it is not the core focus of the festival. At most of the events during the jazz festival, you can see local artisans and products that are being displayed and also available for sale. So, yes, you do have an artistic feature in the festival as well. Okay, super amazing. I don't think we have any more questions because your presentations were too thorough, which is oh, good. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But if there are so any, nice any follow-up questions, then please send them through to us. And I, I, if there's any specific for these guys, I will forward yeah. it on to Marsh K or Phil accordingly. Just yeah. a little quick, quick, um, a quick task. Um, you all, you've all found the reactions tab. If you have learned something from this webinar and you love it, just drop us a little love heart, just so that Steve and Marsha came and Phil can see the love. <laughs> Yay! We, we feel love. We feel love. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So that's good. So lots of bookings we're going to see for Tobago. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's go to the chat everybody and make sure that your drop down says everyone so as a reminder everybody on the webinar gets a prize draw point if you are the fastest finger with the correct answer you get 10 points tomorrow i put everybody in a spin to win and i will let you know who the winner of the prize is Stephen. what is your prize um it is either a tobago gift box or it is a uh, denomination of 50 euros, US dollars, or pounds. Um, so, so it's available around the world. So if you're obviously you're on the, on the continent or in your, on the state side, it'll be dollars or euros. But if you're in the UK, it'll be pounds, or you can choose the um, Tobago gift box. Brilliant. Thank you. So, Marsha, what is your question, please? The easiest question that you could ever ask. Don't make it too easy. <laughs> I'll make it too easy. We want them to win. Okay, <laughs> this one's for all the carnival babies. Who can tell me the dates for Tobago Carnival 2024? Ah. Oh. Oh. Tobago Carnival 2024. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh my. They were listening. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it seems to be October the 25th to the 27th is a popular answer. Is that the correct answer? And um, that's the correct answer. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Roxanne, you were the fastest finger with the correct answer, so you <laughs> have your points. Well done. <laughs> Super. Well, a big, big, massive thank you to you guys for coming on today and uh, telling us all about your beautiful island. Um, and we're loving all of the food. Um, Stephen, definitely need to share some photographs of you with a baby on your knee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will send. If you, if you hold on a second, I can find one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send a copy of the recording um, and the oh. contact details. So if you do have any further questions, do reach out to them. Um, they're very, very happy to help. And a big thank Thank you to all of the agents for joining us today. Loving it a lot. Send your bookings to Tobago. And thank you very much. And we will see you all very soon. Excellent. Thank you very much, guys. Thank Everyone. you. Thank, thank you, you, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank and you. I'll, 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 I'll include a picture on my follow-up. I'll include okay. a picture with my baby on the follow-up. Thank you. <laughs> see you later. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.